The highest inflation... Hey, what's up, everybody? This is just going to be a very slow-paced, laid-back, let's check out the analog pocket. I got uh, table view here with my crappy webcam that has been kicking ass for like 10 years now. Uh, I've got the main camera there, and hopefully I could uh, get this thing working and start streaming as well. There's a few interesting things that I want to test out. Uh, and we might even have some special guests join in. In fact, I should probably let them know that I'm doing this. So, uh, let me just... Alright. <laughs> How's the ceiling? I got lucky. I got very, very lucky. Steven, that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but I'll get there in time. So, I'm just going to... I know there's not many people joined yet, so let's um, let's just start us out. So, going to be doing an unboxing and first use ever of the analog pocket. I've obviously covered it a lot on the channel. I've been following the progress, but I've been wanting to do this live ever since it came out. Uh, and by the time I actually had spare time to do it, I heard that the Open FPGA update was coming out. So I was like, well, why don't I just do all that once at once and wait a little while longer. Still have my wobbly table. Sorry, I gotta. If anybody has any suggestions for a more solid folding table that doesn't wiggle around like this, please let me know. Okay, hopefully, I'm not gonna open it up and have my address pop right up in here. I don't want that 3D printing loser to put my address online again. All right, let's see what we got. Accessory accessory saving some money in uh labeling i guess yeah i um as much as i think it would be hilarious to thank chris Tabor for sending me all this for free <laughs> i've been blacklisted a long time i just ended up uh logging on to the website and purchasing one the moment they became available uh, it's actually a friend of mine's a friend asked if um if i was buying one and i said no and they said, could you pick one up for me and then test it out and send it back when they're done. And that's exactly what I'll be doing. I'll be packing this up and shipping it whenever we're done with it. Case. Does this, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm obviously a fan of analog products. I've covered every single one of them. I've reviewed them fairly. But does this feel like premium shipping to you? This looks like every other shipping I have ever paid for in my entire life. <laughs> okay. Final box. Monty, do you know how much it is on Amazon? Because this table, there was a couple of people that very politely, no trolls or anything, but, you know, politely made fun of me for this in the last video, and I don't blame them one bit. This table was supposed to be to hold me off for a couple of weeks when I first moved in, and other than the wiggle part, it's amazing. It goes lower, higher, folds up to, like, a briefcase size. It's really good, so. 75 Oh, Monty, if you could message me somewhere, I'd pay $75 for a table that doesn't do this. But I promise I'm going to try not to make everybody seasick. So let's go in. Isn't this a neat, uh, neat little knife? My cousin gave me this for being a best man at his wedding or, or groomsman or something. I don't know. I'm not terrible at that stuff. One of the people that stands there and pretends they're important. Uh, okay. Open it up. It's funny. For a long time, I used to open stuff like Apple products and, you know, analogs clearly mimicking Steve Jobs. I'm sure I'm sure somebody over there has a crush on Steve Jobs, but I would I would cut it very carefully and flap it off. And then when I would resell my iPhones, I would make sure that I made the point that the box 
is so perfect that you can very easily mistake it for being brand new. Uh, and then I ended up getting scammed on a couple of iPhone sales, so I just stopped doing it. I just did the trade-in. Get this, use this box for trash. So this is definitely bigger. Wow, that's comfy. That is definitely comfortable. Now I know what everybody's been saying about it. That is cool. Let's see what else it comes with. It comes with one USB-C power cord. They could have saved a lot by having a single deluxe package with all the accessories bundled together. Yeah, but then they would have to, then they would have to buy different packaging equipment, and then they would have to stock the right amount of packaging. And then it's, uh, I, once you've worked for hardware manufacturing companies and you've done distribution, you get a completely different perspective on on how this stuff works. Uh, and by the way, I'm not insulting you, Justin. I'm just saying, like, if I hadn't been part of that other company that did all this, I would have had. A lot of questions as to this stuff too, but it, it really makes sense. And believe it or not, this keeps the prices lower because overall it's less managing all of this stuff. And you got to admit, Analog's done an awesome job at price. My my nasty remarks about shipping aside, I mean, what other product do you get for this price that does the things that it does? So definitely praise them on that one. Could I always get an Ikea top to put it off this wobbly table? No, nah, that probably wouldn't work. Um, how's the weight compared to a Game Boy Color? I, I feel like this is a little heavier, but it's got the battery built in, so I don't know, but let's keep going. All right, so here's the dock, HDMI, USB, and power. It comes with uh, that appears to be an analog branded HDMI cable. I'm going to keep all of the cables and stuff here so that when my friend gets it he gets to feel like he's opening it up new as well a second time because you know i have high speed usb cables i have good usb c or, um hdmi i have good usb c so i don't need to to use these unless we run into an issue but i have a feeling i'll be fine all right docks looking good it's kind of neat I guess I'll leave this here. Maybe I'll put it like that so it's in frame. All right. Okay. Put the dock box away for now. I'll just move it over to the side. Hard case. Uh, thanks for swinging by, Dad. Uh, this will be on stream later, so you can always just come back to it if you want. Uh, Doc does not support 2K or 4K res with filters. This does not do 4K. Nothing at the moment does. So, um, uh, 2K, yes, it should do uh, 1080p, no problem. We will absolutely be testing that. And we'll also be testing out an idea I had that I was bothering Kevtris about that he basically was like, I don't know, try it, see if it works. So we'll see later on. We'll definitely keep going. I have a hard time. I'm trying to be gentle so I don't rip the box or anything, but it's kind of hard to get this one out. I'm going to be super careful. I don't get it. This is the only thing so far. The only thing so far that I'm kind of like, I don't get it, but I don't get it. It's a piece of plexi. Okay, so these, these little standoffs go into here. Okay, so that, that steadies it, and it gives you room to leave a cart in. And then, and now what? 
I'm assuming you're supposed to put this here to protect the screen, but on the inside? It's for people that want to uh, display their pocket. I don't know. I guess. wouldn't you, If you wanted to display the pocket, why wouldn't you just set it on the dock and make it look pretty? Ah, thanks, Blade Blur. But yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to hit the front because it's pushing up against the plastic. But everything else so far, you know, the, the dock and the pocket have been awesome. But this sucks. Maybe this is one of those things that I'm not quite getting it. And in all fairness, right, there's been lots of things. That, you know, we're all human. So... We take a look and we're like, oh, that's dumb. Like when the iPad first came out, you know how many people said, well, it's just a bigger iPhone, that's stupid. And then they sold like a billion of them. So I don't know. It's like for a carrying case, I would have thought you would have had storage for cartridges because they never released the jailbreak, so you can't just put your ROMs on here. So it's not really... Okay, we got to push down on that side. Yeah, uh, I don't... At first glance, I wouldn't really recommend the case. Unless you're, you know, unless you're a completionist, you want to buy every accessory and say that you own it, which I'm not making fun of you. It's totally cool. I get it. I'm going to leave this half open in case we want to go back to it later. So let's see what other stuff we got. Hold on, it's got a block of troll there. Beautiful. The Plexi case feels like a scratch magnet. You know, it's funny. Some are, some aren't. It, I, I don't understand. I think Jonathan from Scanline City would probably have more info about this stuff. But the way some Plexi stuff is made, yes, you could go like that with your fingernail and it's a scratch that will never go away. But other times they're very durable. So I'm not really sure what's the deal with that. Okay, so this is a link cable. I guess this could go to the Game Boy Advance style. That's pretty neat. Hey, 60 frames per second. Thank you so much. I really appreciate these super chats. It's uh, it's such a nice gesture, and I, honestly, I like. I always say I'm thank you, but I don't know if you all realize how how appreciative I actually am. So thank you so much. Nanaloo Pocket Mini Nano. Um, I could, it is going to be kind of quiet. Let me try to move the microphone a little closer. Maybe that'll be helpful. I'm sorry if I just blew everybody's ears out with that. Oh, Blade Blur. Uh, I guess they have the 8K version of that Easy Poo switch. If you want to email me or message me that, a link to that, I definitely would like to take a look. Hey, Nick Persane. Yeah, it would be cool to see those cores on the way as well. If you, uh, all of the time, whenever I do the... Um, whenever I show those uh, Tempest spinner controllers, Nick is the person I'm talking about, so... Definitely search retro RGB for those and be able to pick up your own. Okay, so that is a MIDI connector. That's pretty cool. I wonder, does anybody know if there's anybody out there using the pocket for music right now? Or <laughs> no one could get it, so no musician's able to write music on it. All kidding aside, we're in the middle of a global part shortage, so I should hold off on my, uh, my inventory digs. <laughs> Pat, when's the drop test? I will not be doing the drop test. I actually had to do that legit for a company I worked for, where we, we basically tested our products to see how they would react before doing a, the medical grade testing drop test, because that's actually more stringent. So I basically got, got to smash it for a couple of days. It was excellent. <laughs> Someone mentioned a jailbreak. It's not a real jailbreak. It's clickbait YouTubers trying to tell you that you could uh, you could convert ROMs to look like developer ROMs. It, it works, but it's mostly just clickbait. Uh, analog sync. 
I don't know what this does. It's a 3.5 millimeter. Is this a microphone and headset? Anybody know what this is? Uh, Super NES. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, I also heard where those cores came from was a little questionable. Uh, I do not believe at all that those came from analog. I could be wrong, but um, so I don't know. I, I'm not really comfortable talking about those quite yet. Hopefully somebody knows what that last thing did. We can go back to that. But uh, Thanks, Monty. I'll check as soon as we're done with the stream. Are you serious, Destiny? I have been working nonstop since the Q&A, partly for the, uh, the, you know, the disaster that almost happened here, and also just because I was so backlogged. All I've been doing is just working my butt off, and then I get to take care of my little nephew for a little bit yesterday. He was adorable. He's like eight months old or something like that. Destiny, can you message me the link or something? Um... Because that would be pretty fun to try that out. I honestly had no clue. I don't even think I loaded up Twitter today other than to just tweet out some basic stuff. So this is the MIDI USB cable. That makes sense. Okay, so... Oh, shit. Thanks, Destiny. I appreciate it. That would be very funny. If I totally missed that during this entire stream, you'd have never let me hear the end of it. <laughs> um, how's my lawn looking? Burnt to shit. And then I went out to try to water some of the spots that I had seeded. Because I'm not obsessed with my lawn, but I don't want to look like, you know, I know you're not supposed to use this word anymore, but I don't want to look like trailer trash. So I at least make sure that it's cut and stuff. Uh, and everywhere I watered just sprouted up with crabgrass and and I think I ruined my lawn. So that's nice. Game Gear Adapter. We will definitely be trying this out. What do you all think about the clear flexi cases for these? Because I think they're great. I just don't think they match. So I guess that's totally preference. I don't have a complaint about them. I was just kind of always curious what other people felt about it. Uh, let me put the converters in a different spot. Wonder when they'll get us news on the Analog Duo. So um, I don't have any inside info at all, but I can tell you that the part shortage is is just brutal. I mean, it, nobody is exaggerating about this. I'm sure there's one company sitting on stock of something being assholes and jacking the price up, but that's, that's less than 1% of anybody that would be out there. So my guess is that it's just as hard for them to get chips as everyone else. And it's probably delayed indefinitely until the chip shortage is over. And that's not a dig. That's not an insult. That's not a compliment. It's just, it is what it is. All right. So that's another charger. Uh, so I guess it didn't come with the charger. The dock did. So my friend must have asked me to order this so that this is for powering it on the go. And then you could leave the charger plugged in to the dock uh, if you're docked. I'll leave this over here in case I need it. Any end in sight for the part shortage? At least one year. At least. Hoping the Neo Geo Pocket Adapter will be out soon. I think I bought that too, but... Yeah, that that's one that probably shouldn't be uh, part of the part shortage. I mean, I could be wrong, but... Whoever designed the packaging must have worked at Apple. No, I, I definitely think there's somebody over there rubbing one out, wearing a turtleneck, obsessing over who Steve Jobs was. There's, there's, that's not a coincidence. <laughs> Am I going to get canceled for this one? <laughs> that's my luck. I'm going to get canceled for mostly saying really nice things about this. Okay, so screen protector. I hate putting these on. I hate it. I always I always leave a smudge. Ugh. Now I'm going to do it on stream and look like an asshole if I mess it up. Okay. Uh, 
Urkel Modi is probably easier for analog to make clear adapters for all their devices rather than make them to match each console, especially for consoles with multiple colors. I think that's it. I think now that now that you say that, I think that's absolutely it. And I would do the same thing. So zero, zero disrespect. Okay, so. Ah, oh man, I'm, I'm so nervous about this. I screw these up all the time. Okay. Uh, I mean, that already looks pretty damn clean, but just in case there's some residue on it or something. Feel like that made it worse i feel like it was cleaner before i did that but let's keep trying I think this is good to be honest if this was mine i probably wouldn't have even done that i probably would have just stuck this one right on top of it because it looked perfectly clean here we go i'm lined up properly right For anybody just joining this second, this is the screen protector. I'm not manhandling the screen like this. Oh, man. All right. Well, here. Whoever at Analog is obsessed with Apple is probably going to appreciate this one. Let me use my, my iPhone to flat edge to push that off. I wish something that could take S video and having something that just outputs 4K would be nice. Well, you could get the RetroTINK 5X now in the 4K Gamer Pro, or you could wait for the RetroTINK 4K when it comes out, which might might have to wait till after the part shortage, but Mike's been showing progress on Twitter. Um, so it's definitely doable now. A lot of people did not like the sharpness effect the 4K Gamer Pro did, uh, or, or added. I mean, sometimes I liked it a lot, sometimes I didn't. It's really up to you. Okay, I think that was a success. There's no thumbprints, there's no bubbles. I think that might have been the first successful screen protector I have ever put on without screwing something up. Um, all right, so I guess I've had this sitting here since it was released. So, power? I'm assuming the battery's dead, but oh, hey, look at that. Let me turn this around so you're looking at it correctly. Um, yeah, we could just go ahead and skip that. But I do want to grab my USB-C cable, and that way we can update the firmware and everything. Gotta be in here somewhere. I just rearranged all my cables and stuff once again, so it might take a moment. All right. Um, absolutely, analog market's kind of BS. I don't know. I have a tremendous amount of respect for that marketing. I think that they know exactly what they're doing, and I think credit, credit where credit's due. It's really all about what you do afterwards. Tools, settings. Okay, so let's, let me download and see about the firmware update. Has anyone identified an alternative screen protector so I don't feel silly paying that much for a single piece of plastic? 
good uh, good question good question let's see um believe i need a micro sd to update the firmware thank you i think i have one of those right here uh, i'll grab that out and format it what's up t um let's see which ones i have laying around i got a four gig two four gigs come on i gotta have a bigger one Yes, I got a 128 gig just sitting here, waiting to have some love. All right, perfect. Ooh, I almost just shot those other micro SDs right across my floor. Destiny said Amazon has screen shields for them. She just bought a pack last week. So thank you. Perfect. Appreciate the heads up. Um... Heck, if you, if you want to message me that link, too, I could add it to the description to get the, the exact one that you got so people know it's not bullshit. Actually, let me... Um... Yeah, you're a mod on the channel, Destiny, so if you want, I think you're allowed to just drop links in. Um, moderators are supposed to, but... YouTube's been weird about blocking links, which I don't have a problem with, to be honest with you. Okay, so I showed this process so many times over the years, so I'm going to just, um, I'm just going to talk about what I'm doing, because it's already in like a 20 of my videos and web pages. So I'm using SD formatter to format the card first. This was already used for recall box for, I guess, when I was doing that last Raspberry Pi stream. And SD card formatter is supposed to blow away all of the partitions on it and make it just one. Then... I'm going to go back into a fat 32 format because even though the pocket should probably take everything else uh, i just i like to be safe and it's it's not going to hurt anything so uh where are I'm... okay so then i'm using fat 32 gui format and you have to close all explorer windows when you do this or it'll fail out and yep 127 gigabyte card it'd be really shitty if i just erased one of my hard drives Okay. Have I been using Windows uh, Windows 11? Um, I tried it, and it failed so many times. It kept crashing. I got slowdowns. And I thought, all right, we'll wait for the spring update and see. And I waited for the spring update, and there was zero change. So I was just like, okay, forget it. Let me go back to Windows 10. And as soon as I went back to Windows 10, no problems at all anymore. So... Yeah, I'm going to be boycotting that for quite a while. Plus, I hate the whole you have to log in thing. Uh, I don't think that's fair or right. Now I'm just trying to get the jailbreak firmware. Okay, I think I found it. Drives me nuts when I find articles where they don't put links to what they're talking about. That's why you'll always see on RetroRGB.com, there's always a paragraph of what is this, then the links, and then my thoughts underneath. I don't bury it in there. Uh... Wait, these are, this isn't a true jailbreak. Uh, these are just cores. Yeah, this is what I thought. Uh, this isn't a true jailbreak. These are cores that allow GBA and Game Boy Color um, to run on the open side. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what this is. Okay. Well, at least that GitHub. Let me drop this in the chat for anybody watching. Yeah, of course Kotaku called it a jailbreak we've been waiting for. They probably don't even know what it is. I've had such trouble with them. What's the difference? The difference is a true jailbreak that allows for all of the analog cores 
means that you can just load up all of your ROMs for every core analog that's ever released. Uh, so I get that. Let me. 729 firmware. Okay. Updating firmware guide. This should be pretty easy. Download the firmware, place the firmware file on the root of the micro SD card. Power it off, power it on. All right. Good job, Kevin. I had zero, zero doubt that this wouldn't be super easy. Uh, but thank you. We're also going to probably have to update the dock as well. So we'll get to that in a bit. So where is the micro SD slot on this thing? Oh, right on the side. Beautiful. Damn it, Kevin. You have no respect for fat fingered people. <laughs> That's why you're supposed to put the little indentation next to it so you can get your finger in. Is it as good as a Terra Onion micro SD slot? I don't know. I, I think they're equal. There we go. And then power it off. And then power it back on. Jeez, you can't get any more simple than that. Look at that. Seriously. No sarcasm. 100% serious. Well freaking done, Kev. Power it on and go. Have a little status light right there. No guessing. Okay, I'm also going to try to find how to do this. There's no micro SD on this, which would be dumb anyway, so let me get that firmware. Just going to grow your fingernails out a bit. I hate that long fingernails, especially because I still think I'm a guitar player. <laughs> so when those scratch up against the frets, that drives me nuts. I got to grow out a long pinky fingernail like a cokehead just for inserting SD cards. Yeah, well, if I owned a pocket, I guess I'd have to. Okay. Doc uses the same firmware file. Interesting. Update pocket firmware first to 1.0 V, then insert pocket into the doc. Follow the on-screen on screen instructions directly from Pocket. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll try that next. We have an HDMI cable right here. Oh, my switch fell. Damn it, one second. wonder if my dock will uh, produce the static people reported when removing the pocket from the dock. Yeah. It's just spring elements. It sounds sketchy, but it's not static. Yeah, I wouldn't, I don't really worry about stuff like that, to be honest. Snowy G1, what's up? What's with the water coming from the ceiling behind you? <laughs> oh, QT. <laughs> Oh, man, that was 100% true, what happened right in that uh, Q&A. I almost did one of those live, too. That would have been so much worse, because I probably wouldn't have even thought to hit stop. I would have just been running around in circles. RC, I wish the GBC and DMG cores were not bundled. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Do you want to re-explain? Uh, Justin, I want to see what the experience is with the Game Boy Color Advance or regular cart and the built-in cores versus the open FPGA cores. Uh, it's got to be, if the rumors are true, it's, um, it's probably identical. It's funny, I think I heard a, I think I heard one of the Mr. Trolls say that they thought the Analog stole the Mr. Cores to put them on the open FPGA, and I just thought that was the most ridiculous thing on the planet. They worked their butts off 
to make these cores for the pocket, but yet they're going to steal one <laughs> from Mister. That's, you know, most of the communities that support the pocket and Mister are amazing. Good people, big fans, really help out. But, you know, they each have their 1% of trolls that are just hilarious to me. And it's very reminiscent of Xbox versus, uh, you know, PlayStation and all that crap. What time is it? Here we go. Okay, so now we should be able to just let me connect this so we get power. Connect this in. Uh, nope. And let me flip this over. And if all of this works out, I might just do a. Um, I might flip the, the stream window around so you can see this full screen. Okay, your dock firmware is out of date and requires an update. No download needed. Continue. New firmware. Updating dock. And we're not, I'm not seeing anything on screen. Oh, no, here we go. Okay. Well, I think while we're waiting, I'm going to switch the stream around. I know it's annoying for people watching, so just bear with me, please. All right, cool. Will analog make a retro pocket from wood with hot glue? Oh, I can't wait for that video to come out. That is a long time in the making. Most wobbly table ever. Yeah, Aaron, I was already making fun of it. Uh, Monty said they sent a link on Twitter that I'll check. Let me check that right now. Oh, that does look cool. Oh, thanks, Monty. I'm, I'm adding this to my cart, and uh, we'll check that out. And then I get to keep fold this one up and keep it as a backup, so it works out. As long as it's tall enough, then I'm cool. Because this comes up, I'm, um, before I messed my backup, I was 5'11". I actually shrunk from that when I ripped the disc out, but this goes right up to, like, my belt level. So I need something about that high. Yeah, Chris, it's always because I'm using a boom mic. It's on the lower side. I could turn it up, but then when I get closer, it gets a little... Let me turn it up a little bit, but I'll do it in slow increments so I don't blow anybody's ears out here. Can you use a Game Boy camera with Super Game Boy? Yes, absolutely. Cousin Scott did a really, really cool project about that where he used a battery and an SNES Mini and the Pocket and the Game Boy... Or, uh, not the Pocket, the um, SNES Mini, Super Game Boy, Game Boy camera, hooked it all up to a battery pack, and he had a way to, like, record video with that with, like, a portable... Um, uh, recorder. It was crazy. It was a fun thing. Uh, while we're updating too, let me grab some cartridges. I don't have much, but I do have Everdrive.
Okay, looks like that rebooted. I got a pile of games and stuff here too to try out. Does the dock also do 1440p? We'll find out. I don't think so. I think it was uh, 1080p only, but it still looks great. Um, I'm not getting anything out of this, so let me, let me power this down. And I guess we could just play Tetris for a second here first, just to see. Uh, I'm not upstate, and I don't know what Andy Cap's hot fries are. Sorry. Okay. So, one thing that I, I saw people talking about was they felt like this wasn't a sturdy, a sturdy connection. That looks pretty sturdy to me. Speaking of 1440p, or am I aware of any DACs that support that for higher-end CRT monitors? A lot do. Um, I, I, there's somebody, there, uh, Jason Guffey has been messing around a lot with that in the Q&A stuff. I think he's found a few. Louis Watto, thank you so much for the super chat. I can't tell you how much I appreciate those. It's what keeps this stuff going. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And yeah, this was the very first order, the very first day. This does look awesome. Okay, but as cool as that looks, I want to play it through the dock. So let's reboot the dock, unplug, unplug just in case there's power coming down HDMI. Are there CRTs that can resolve 1440p? Strangely enough, there absolutely are. Okay. I'm not seeing anything on the pockets or on the on the dock. Let me check my settings. Is it supposed to be automatic? What are you powering the dock with? My PC. So good point. Uh, good point. Let me get a longer cable, just in case. Uh, I just need to power it off of a more powerful adapter. It needs 3 amp. Mm, I think that's just cutting it close. Uh, so let's see what I got here. Three thousand milliamp. You think they would just say three amp? That's funny. The importer. Um, thanks for the shout out. I, I was actually, I thought I was pretty down the middle on that take, though, uh, and I, I mean that in a nice way. Like I, I, I really genuinely felt like I, I gave, I praised analog and gave them the benefit of the doubt, but said, hey, if they screw everybody over, you're, you're working for them for free. So you're, you're betting on them not screwing everybody over, which is fair. I don't think that's unfair to, to anybody. Uh, sorry for delaying the stream. I just... I didn't want to use, I didn't want to completely unravel my friend's cords and stuff. Let me try this one and see if it works. I think what I have it plugged into is 2.5 amp. And 2.5 amp obviously isn't going to be enough. So if it's a uh, three, so let's try. Oh, of course it has to be just out of sight now. Well, we'll get to it. Thanks very much, Shark Bear Gamer. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh... 
Okay, so I have just powered this on with a three amp power supply. And the lights are lighting up in the screen in the order, like one, two, three, four, but not staying. I don't know if it's still booting. All right, I get one green light on the dock. Greenlink, I will check all of that stuff in a few minutes. I'm just trying to figure out why I can't get the dock to work. Because um, I could obviously just switch the camera view back and play like this, which wouldn't be too terrible just to try some stuff out. But uh, making me nervous that the dock isn't working. I probably should have used their power supply just to start. But I think it finished updating. Uh, I am using USB-C, and I am making sure that it was enough voltage and, and amperage. Sorry. I mean, it would be funny if I bricked it, but <laughs> I'm just stalling for drama. No, no, this stuff embarrasses me. I don't want to keep people waiting while I plug something in. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're using theirs. So let me go back to the dock box. This one. Get to this charger. Five volt, three amp. That's exactly what I had just plugged into it. Uh... That's their HDMI cable. RG Dickinson, when my dock ships and arrives, I feel I'll need to reference this video when nothing works on arrival. That's one of the main reasons I like to do videos like this because what I this, whatever I run into, you're probably gonna run into. And I've had some developers just light me up. They hate it when I do this, but it's like, you know, Criticism sucks sometimes, because if you make your stuff hard to figure out, this is what's going to happen. I did not accusing Analog of that. I did not use their power adapter, so this is on me, of course. But uh, I just want to see if I can get this on camera. That's the only other challenge. So let me grab... And if, I know I have an extension cable that's just a few feet away from me, so let me grab that real quick. It should be just right behind me. Okay, we are plugged in. Oh, I gotta turn that light off, it's right in my face. All right, we are plugged in using the power supply that Analog shipped with. We are getting a green light right here. Pockets off, plugging the sucker in, turning it on. Getting the logo on the pocket. Okay, so that was 100% my fault. I just tried to use a different cord because I didn't want to unravel the one it came with. So my bad, 100%. Uh, if you need trial and error on first boot, it's not well designed. Yeah, if it wasn't for my fault, I would agree, but this was on me, not them, 100% my fault. If the case is that good at preserving the pocket, it might not be a silly purchase if they're tossing it in a bag that another person might disrespect. Fair enough. But I was just like, since we're on the subject, hold on. I have had this case since I was a little kid. It has taken a beating. It's soft on the inside. It kept my Game Boy from scratching. Like, you could hold your games in it. You could tuck some manuals or whatever the hell else. You could put it around your belt like all the cool kids used to. Never once seen anybody with a Game Boy on their belt. Here's one of the few Game Gear cases I have that's the same theory. You could uh, 
has soft on the uh, soft felt on the inside. Store your game gear in it. I keep all my games here. Um, I don't know what I would keep. Probably the link cable if I had one. So these and now look at this. One piece of plastic. No spot for the games. I th maybe a rubber thing that you. Wait, what is this? Oh, that's not a felt thing. That's just this is just a piece of cardboard. What the hell is this? Open hard case. <laughs> this is an instruction manual, so that it doesn't even actually come with any kind of protection for the screen. So if this gets squished hard enough, it could it could mess with the screen. So I don't know about you, but I would prefer something that I would actually prefer a combination of both. This with some more screen soft material on, on the out uh, on the inside, and maybe on the back some spots to keep some games or something. So that way you can just throw it in your bag and maybe it is a little stronger. But so far everything I've seen has been beautiful and, and lived up to the hype, except the case. The case seems kind of dumb. But once again, on a regular basis, I've uh, I have said stuff like that, and then people have come back with, "What about this scenario or that scenario?" And they're right. So we got two USB ports. So why don't I try a USB controller, the same one I've been using for Mister forever? Retro bit controller. Aaron Welsh, thank you so much for the super chat. Be honest, little Bob was chased around the schoolyard with his Game Boy and Game Gear securely belted to his waist. No, I did get quite a few fights, but never over a Game Boy or Game Gear. Okay, we get that plugged in. Controller is not working, but maybe I have to power it on with the controller plugged in. So let's try Okay. Regarding docking, some users have reported a shocking sound when connecting it. That was the spring, and mine has not done that. Mod the inside of the case with a piece of felt. Yeah, but I mean, if you paid your premium shipping to get your premium case, don't you think it would come with a premium piece of felt? Okay, uh, controller, not doing shit. So, was I missing something in that this was supposed to work with USB controllers too, or was it only Bluetooth controllers? It's pretty picky with controllers. Well, this is about as generic as it gets, and it's incredibly fast, so that's a little disappointing. Um, but there's something else I wanted to try, and you know, I was going to wait till the end, but since this might actually be something kind of neat, I picked up a Thunderbolt USB-C extension cable. I want to see if you could hold on to the pocket and stream through the dock at the same time. Let's see if this works. Doesn't look like it, but let's... Uh, um, Marcus, your dock works with the wired SN30. I have one of those. Let me grab it. Thank you. Yeah, it does not look like I, you could use an extension cable for this to work. That would have been cool as hell, though. 
undock and dock again. Yeah, let me try just in case. I don't want to just completely write this off. But uh, this is not looking likely. That would have been awesome, though. Imagine if you could stream like this. Like, maybe if you got slightly longer. The longer the cable, the, the more finicky the connection would be for something that high speed. But imagine just being able to hold on to it and stream. I thought that would be a really, really fun idea. Alex, not all USB-C extension cables will have all the pins to support. Yes, exactly. That's why I bought this very expensive one to try. And I even, uh, I believe, checked with Kevin. Um, and he was basically like, I never tried, you know, try it. If it works, cool. If it doesn't, you know, don't say I didn't warn you. I mean that with love, by the way. This was not designed to do Oh, shit! Does it work? Is it working? Alright, so when you do this, no video is on the screen. I am getting video over here, but this controller is no no longer working. Whereas when I unplug this, it does. So I just wasted a bunch of money on this. <laughs> well, at least we've at least we learned. Anybody need a uh, premium quality <laughs> three inch <laughs> extension cable? That's something I'll never use. If it's, I think this is Thunderbolt compatible, so maybe this would be something I could use to just extend a Thunderbolt dock, but, all right, well, let's, uh, let's try, I have the SN30 USB cable, I should, uh, this is actually the SN30 Pro, no, yeah, in dock mode, you can't use controls. Thank you, BX Benny. Uh, use controller. Plug it into the USB also. I mean, that's this. It is, right? They both say USB. Chris McKinney says they use an SN30 Pro, so they confirm this should be working. I mean, I could try to connect it with Bluetooth. Um, let me power the dock off and back on again. Do you have to manually turn the controller on in corded mode? I've never had to before. That's an excellent question because these controllers you could power up in different modes, but um, uh, it, it should automatically switch to USB. Super NES said most 8 controllers need a special firmware now. Hmm. Uh, try a PS4 controller. I have never owned a PS4. <laughs> Master Safer, did you beat Pokemon yet? I'm still disappointed Pokemon isn't Kirby. Uh, turn controller on, it is. Um, let me try again. Maybe it is just, I doubt it's just charging, but you know. That would be very silly if that just worked, but no, that's not it. Uh, only the 2.4 gig controllers need special firmware. Try two player support, update controller firmware. Yeah, I don't really know. Uh, that's what the bottom looks like. Just one power connected. Try one of the other modes like D input on the controller. Um, so isn't that where like you power it on? That pocket only supports mad cats. Uh, if anybody has any other ideas on that, let me know. Let me see what other controllers I have. That could work. definitely have more USB controllers than just those two. Okay, and actually, believe it or not, the importer sent me a box a while back that has a bunch of controllers. That might be the savior of the stream here. We'll figure that out. But um, 
Here's one that everybody's probably seen at some point. Uh, hmm. Okay, so the light was solid, or was blinking before I plugged in the controller, and now it's solid, but it's still not working. Power on the controller, wirelessly pressing X and start, put it into pairing mode, click pairing button on the back of pocket. I will try that next. I'm just kind of confused as to why USB controllers are not working. Let me, um, here's the one from the Genesis, brand new controller I never used. Oh, wait, wait, okay, odd, that one worked of all the ones, so we know it's not broken. Okay. But it's not moving up and down, or left. Let me get this, sorry, I was off camera, I didn't realize. So, moving it up and down doesn't do anything. Start doesn't do anything, but A works. I wonder if it's the same with the rest of them. Yadagaris wants to know how they could contribute to the already available cores and open FPGA. They want to fix some issues and the source code's not available. I think that kind of goes to where, where those came from. So I don't think you're going to see the code for those. Um, but same thing. So this, the light lights up, but we get nothing out of any of the buttons. I would have hoped for a lot more USB controller support. Let's try this one. So light is blinking. Light just turned solid. Oh, hey, okay. So the retro flag SNES USB controller works. Let me, uh, let me check this out one second so I can share this with everybody. And these are $16.99. I think that's a pretty damn good price, all things considered. Let me drop that in the chat if anybody's wondering. Have I tried pushing mode and B on the Genesis controller to switch inputs? I don't I don't know what that is. I'm sorry, I've never really I've, I've never used that controller before. Okay. All right, so it's a Nintendo fanboy. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got. Let me put these controllers down. I have to go through. I don't need that anymore. Although now that it's out, let me let that charge in case we want to try Bluetooth later. I have a 2.5 amp charger right here. So this controller should charge up pretty quick. I haven't used it in forever. Um, all right. So let's see what settings. 1080p 60. So for anybody who was asking if they had added, um, if they had added support for 1440p, no. Uh, not sure that was ever advertised as a feature. Shifty Jedi uses that controller for the mister. Yeah, this is shockingly a good one. Yeah, Jamie, you know, I am a little... I, I gotta say, I am a little disappointed in that because USB controller support shouldn't be that hard. But, you know, it's a matter of what's how much time they have. All right, wired USB pad. Can't change the button mapping. Okay. 
So I'm not going to go through any of these. My Life in Gaming and Digital Foundry and everybody on the planet who got a free one did a, did a video on this. Um, so let's just play cartridge real quick and just kind of see how this looks on the TV. I guess you could downscale 720 with the tank then upscale. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would work. Uh, QWERTY MOTO, what's up, man? Uh, this dock testing has reminded me that that cheap USB-C dongle I posted on Twitter ended up working as a Switch dock. I updated it. I just um, uh, I just retweeted that tweet a while back with one that absolutely did work. The only thing was that I used a Nintendo-branded, like a, an official Switch power supply. I had bought a second one a while back, and a lot of people say if you don't use that, then you could have some issues. This is going to be hysterical seeing how uh, seeing how bad I do playing it through uh, the OBS window. Oh yeah, this is unplayable. Not not the analog pocket, <laughs> the dock through the OBS window. Let me dial it back a little bit. No sound, huh? Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so we got. Please let me know if this is too loud, too soft, anything else. Um, I obviously can't hear it, so. Yeah, I had to make sure the sound was off because when I was in the dual camera mode, if I hadn't, or if I had enabled sound, it would have been twice the sound output for me, so it would have been a bad echo. I mean, this looks pretty neat. Why is the thumbnail on the top right instead of my face? Y'all know what I look like. I mean, I gotta say, right? So I'm, I'm just a big fan of how things look on their original screens, but then when I play them on a flat panel, I just enjoy them for how they look on a flat panel. But this is cool. <laughs> this is really cool. I like this. I'm pretty sure there's something like this, um, didn't the Mr. Team add something similar to theirs as well, somewhat recently? But, I, I don't know, this is cool. I like the way this looks. I'm only gonna play it for another minute, because I know there's a bunch of other stuff people would want to see, but this looks neat. The Importer, am I insane for purchasing and installing a 1TB SSD for their soft modded PS3 Slim? No, um, I would always recommend these days looking into RetroNAS because there's one thing that could do many things, so that investment would affect multiple consoles instead of just one, but if all you cared about your PS3, is your PS3, that's fine, and also, um, it's not like you did anything bad, those work awesome, I just, I like to, I don't, <laughs> I don't have much money, so I like to spread it out, so if I personally were going to buy a, um, a hard drive i would want to add it to my unraid server at build a retro nas thing out of it whatever else uh so i want to take um a game gear a definitely made for game gear game like sonic 2 does anybody happen to know mortal kombat 2 for game gear this was also released on the master system at some point right because i need for my collection a, a game gear only game Okay, so that's a Game Gear game plugged into it. I mean, it's pretty damn steady. I don't know what people were saying about how they felt it was going to fall out. It doesn't seem like it's going to fall out to me. It didn't really move, but... Okay, power it off. Power it back on, and let's see how it goes. A lot of people seem to uh, to love to slag off on analog now. Yeah, I mean it's just trolls, right? I like, you know, it's. I was talking about that before. It's just, it's not. It is the very, very, very small percentage of the people who actually like this stuff are trolling, and the only reason I've been so hard on them is because for a long time nobody else was at all. No one even considered to question the things that they were doing, let alone have something possibly not positive to say about it. So I think a lot of people just assumed that that means I'm an analog hater, but it's not the case. I just, I, I'm just honest and, you know, not afraid to speak my opinions.
All right, so this just worked. And I, I obviously mean that in a nice way. Plugged right in, worked with no issues, looks gorgeous. Didn't expect any different because I've been using the um, Game Gear Core, or I had used the Game Gear Core on the other analog products. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's a pretty good idea. Um, the screen's cut off on the stream. Yeah, Adam, I, I just, I, I, I'm not, I'm not sweating that. So let's see, can I just go right from playing docked to playing on the pocket? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, you're right, and this screen does look freaking awesome. So that's really cool. I, I think that is a feature that they talked about, but being able to just go from docked to handheld, I, I think is something that's really important. You know, whenever you have a product that can do both, this is kind of the point. You want to be able to use it whenever you feel like it. Yeah, that is cool as hell. Yeah, I'll try to move the, the thing over a little bit, but I, I'm definitely not going to obsess about... Oh, hold on. Uh, about this, because this isn't... I think everybody knows that the, the quality here is great. I don't think we need to worry about analyzing the output of this. So I'm, I'm just going to try to keep it as basic as possible. Let me cut off the other side. Right. 200. Yeah, alright, that should be good enough for now. Uh, yeah, good enough. Okay, so let me try a game that is definitely Master System on Game Gear. So this should essentially work the same as if I had plugged a Master System game in. Mike, the, uh, the gamer guy, nope, no, no, uh, no buzz from the spring at all. So this is interesting. It says system game gear, but this is actually a master system game. Huh, interesting. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not going to make it any better or worse or anything like that, but it certainly looks cool. Any wobble when cartridges are plugged in. Uh, Non-Billy Barty, I wobbled the shit out of these things. I shook it right on camera about a minute ago, and it did not budge at all. So, I just also want to see how Master System games look on this. Oh, it's perfect. I mean, I, honestly, I definitely got to say just wow on that screen. Like, I prefer to game on... TVs, but like, I mean, this thing's beautiful. Everybody, everybody who said this thing looked great was telling 100% the truth. It absolutely is. Uh, so somebody had asked about ROM cart compatibility. So let me put some of this stuff away and, uh, and then find that out for you. Also, somebody had commented that MK2 was a uh, bootleg, but not an official release. I just want to make sure I have one Game Gear cartridge that is absolutely 100% a Game Gear exclusive. I was thinking of picking up Bare Knuckle because it's not too expensive, um, but I just I need it for testing. I got to make sure that I always have at least one of those. Bare Knuckle is probably a good one. If anybody on the stream has one for sale, I'll trade you or something else. So Master System to Game Gear adapter works on Pocket. Thank you, Captain Rev. I have, uh, don't have mine anymore to test. But that was something that I was definitely interested in. So let's try the EverDrive Game Boy X7. Um, we'll fire this up. I don't remember if this is on the latest firmware, so we, we'll see. Yeah, Streets of Rage on SMS and Game Gear are different versions, so... Did I press the power button? No, I must not have held it on long enough. Play cartridge. There you go. Uh, that 
that's the OS version. So uh, I can't remember the last time I, I uploaded it. Yeah, Jamie Maxwell certainly had some, some gripes with analog in the chat that are all very valid. And that's the type of thing I'm talking about. The fact that I talked about it publicly and I was for a long time the only one you know, that's kind of why people thought I became a, an analog hater. And it just, not it. I think the products are awesome. I just, you know, sometimes you can't love everything everybody does. You can, no one's perfect. Let's try another Tetris, because why the hell not? Alucard 1.5 is the latest. Okay, thank you for checking. I appreciate that. We'll check again. I know I have a uh, Game Boy Advance EverDrive here that is on the latest. So... Go back to the Game Gear with the filter on? Sure, I'll do that in one second. Let me just, uh... Main entry. So... Bob just remembered the analog pocket isn't something he'll eat. Thanks, Zach. Would never guess if you didn't tell me. Um, so... With the filter on, can I? Can you enter the menu and change the filters through the dock through a USB controller? Is there like a button combo I could hit? Marcello, I, unfortunately, you were wrong about that one. You said uh, nobody but YouTubers have these analog products at launch. That's not true. Um, they, they ship out quite a few of them. And in fact, all of the ones that you've ever seen me review, they've never sent me anything. Uh, they sent me... Um, no, that's wrong. They sent me the DAC, but that was it. Um, so, and I, I had purchased everything just the same way everybody else does. So that, and it's just that, you know, it must feel that way because you see YouTubers reviewing them and then you can't get one. You meaning like nobody. So I understand why people might think that, but that's definitely not the case. I got no problem throwing shade if it's necessary, but I, I don't, I, I think that's... Uh, okay. Aaron, I'm not repeating that, but that was very funny. <laughs> so, is there... There's no... Is there... How do I get into the home menu? Funny. Is anybody... Oh! I don't know what I did. I just hit a bunch of buttons. Okay. Uh, doc. Video. Pocket. Systems. Game Boy Color. So, there's no filters in uh, docked mode still? Interesting. The home button does work on it. Okay. Uh, how does the input lag feel? Um, so, I have done zero input lag testing on this. But I got to say, if, uh, if it's a Kevtris product, it's got to be near zero or zero. Um, he's just... I don't, I don't think he, he would allow something to be released that isn't. <laughs> uh, however, I am now playing through an OBS preview window. So I am uh, I am probably seeing three to five frames of latency because of OBS. So that's not a fair uh, not a fair comparison. Also the Game Boy Advance games tuck in very nicely. So any there's certainly no no issue with those falling out. Let's boot this up. Simple Minded Sage said the filters are in docked mode. Uh, are they in the pocket menu? I'll, I'll check. Oh, yeah, you're right. All right, well, let's. Uh... So, systems, Game Boy Advance. I must be in the wrong one. Have I ever tested... La hey, Chris. Uh, yes, I have. And it depends on your capture card. It depends on quite a lot of things. But uh, it's pretty freaking laggy. 
it's laggy to the point where when I'm using data path vision cards, I actually use it through the vision window, not through OBS. Like I'll have both windows side by side and I'll only use the vision window to look at while gaming. Otherwise, I, I just, it, this is too laggy. So this, uh, that delay, this is the first time I've ever turned on this EverDrive. So that, that's what that was. That had nothing to do with the pocket. I still have no idea what I did with mine. That stupid joke I made at the end of that Intech gaming video, that was 100% true. I had no idea what happened to it, so I bought another one. I think we should blame Voltar for that. Don't you? We should all blame Voltar, right? And just a reminder for people just joining, I'm not going to resize all of the windows every time I swap the cores around, so it's definitely not going to look 100% uh, lined up. Okay, so home button plus left and home button, button plus right. Not working here. Okay. I'm trying to figure out the key command. Okay, I still don't really know what I did. I think it was trigger, select, and start, but... So, pocket... Systems, Game Boy Advance, Video, Display Mode. Okay. Thank you very much, Simple Minded Sage. I appreciate that. That is their screen name. I didn't just call somebody Simple Minded. <laughs> Have I tried? No, I have not gotten to the open FPGA piece yet. Um, I should get to that right after this, pretty much. Unless somebody has anything else they want me to test. In the unboxing, I showed the different uh, accessories, although I have no way to test any of the MIDI stuff or anything like that. So here's already something that's uh, hopefully I could fix. A and B... I always prefer when it's A and B because it's much easier to keep your thumb across here. So let's see if I could, if they have any remapping. So I think it's select start and down brings up that menu. So controllers, wired USB pad, no button mapping allowed here. <laughs> Steven, I called myself that term and then somebody said somebody's screen name out loud. But you're right. Uh, the, the analog trolls and the Mr. Trolls are going to get together to cancel me for that. Okay, so the button remapping would be would certainly be nice. It's not the end of the world. Um, in a badly scaled OBS window, this filter still looks cool. Um, so that's pretty neat. Because don't forget, whenever you use these filters, it needs to be at whatever the native resolution is, or nothing's even. And even even with the unevenness, I think I'm not an English major, uh, this looks really cool. So um, I will put it back to the way it was, though. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be better for the stream, no matter what. You could swap it to YB in system settings. Okay. Settings, pocket, systems, GBA, controls. Uh, Super Game Boy? Is that it? Okay. Okay. Interesting. Not really intuitive, but I'm sure I'd figure that out eventually. How does the flashing map overlay look on the pocket screen? That's a great question. I'll try that in a second. I forgot that's why I even picked this game to test. Oh, so much more comfortable with the controller mapped out this way. Well, I would think that this is the most important controller mapping for this. Uh, so, yeah, I'm happy. Um, let's see how it looks on the screen. Yeah. 
It is flashing. Let me see if I can get that right up to the camera for you. Oh, yeah, now it stops. Hold on one second. Uh, I'm just hitting all the buttons until I get to the next level, and I'll put it right up to the camera again. See if there's like a temporary burn when switching to something else. It's already switched to something else, and there's zero burn here. The frame blending will stop the flashing. Yeah, but I mean, it's really up to you on, on what you prefer the best look is. Sorry, I accidentally did story mode, so now I had to go through all this real quick. Oh man, these story modes take forever. Okay. Uh, so... Trying to get it in focus. Oh yeah, Jamie, I, I never imply that you're a hater or anything like that. Um, so that is awesome. Thank you for whoever or multiple multiple people in the chat who told me about this. Hold the uh, the home button, and um, and tap to the right to circle between them. Let me just look at this, you know, I know it's not really helpful for the stream, but I just kind of want to look at this close up with my eyes real quick. Yeah, I mean, the filters are pretty good. Yeah, I, I like I, I like them both, to be honest. I like it in, ori ugh, in original mode and in the, the analog version of it. I think that's cool. Man, I wish I loved playing on handhelds. This would, I mean, this is pretty damn awesome. Uh, so let me set this back to just analog GBA. Um, so before we switch to the Open FPGA, um, that uh, anything else anybody want, wants me to try. Also, uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, F the F them. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to pronounce it. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, let me put the link in the description again. Uh, I'll do it right now. Uh, actually, let me edit the link too with that. But that is the exact controller that was working, and I like that controller. And I think on Quirk's list, it actually made it. Um, uh, it was pretty fast, all the things considered. All right, I just added that to the, the description, and uh, some I think the description auto updates too. That was something I learned uh, during one of the last live streams. It might take a minute, but okay. No, I guess not, but whatever. Oh, thank you so much, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it is kind of tricky, but it is also a lot of fun, especially when there's awesome people like all of you in the chat. This makes it way more fun. But multiplayer with the dock if I have another Game Boy. So the only thing I could do is Tetris. I have one original Game Boy. I have Tetris and the EverDrive. And that's the only other thing I could do. Um, oh, the official Switch SNES controllers work too. That's pretty neat. Um, so if I were to hook up, would that even work in docked mode? Let me go back through these accessories real, real quick and see what we got. This is nano pocket. Nope, that's not going to cut it. Here. All right, I'll go back over. And if, if I can find the right link cable, I'll try that. And then we can get into the open FPGA stuff. You cannot do multiplayer while docked. Thank you. Because I saw one of those uh, things that seemed like it was... Um, it seemed like it was a link cable with a USB port. 
We'll go back through it real quick. Only gonna take a sec. This is that's the MIDI in one. Okay, that's obviously not what we need. Analog sync. I still have no idea what this is. Does anybody have any clue what this is? It's got like a link cable thing on the bottom, and it has two 3.5 millimeter ports with something that says sync on it. I still have no idea what that is. Uh, yeah, Urkel, but what for for audio? Is this for connecting a, like a microphone and a headset? Is that for like musicians? No, Alucard, it's not the MIDI adapter. I showed that one, but uh, good good thought. Good thought. For the music maker. Okay, okay. <laughs> to listen to MP3s with your sweetie. <laughs> um, okay, pocket link cable. And let's just see, is this the Game Boy Advance link cable? Um... So that's definitely not going to fit on that, but I think I have something else. Let me check what's doing this. Okay. Let's see what I got in my pile of goodies here. Love F-Zero's music in the background. Yeah, that's why I left it playing. I figured uh, fill the silence a little bit. So this is... Okay, so that's probably a Game Boy Advance cheap link cable. Well, let me get... Yeah, I wasn't... I was out of view for a minute there. So... This looks like something I must have picked up at a dollar bin. This is... Smaller... It's a bigger one? I have no clue what this is. Anybody know what this is? <laughs> I gotta just... I think I gotta bring these to uh, to Retro World Expo. Like, all the stuff that I don't know what it is. And just sell it. Because... I think I picked up a bunch of these things over the years. Wondering what they were and how to use them. Okay, so this. I think this one right here. One side plugs into the original Game Boy, and the other side would plug into... Okay. Okay, okay. We're getting somewhere here, so let me power this off. Alright, so, let me just take a moment here. Drive. So we, we don't need these anymore. We do need those. And I'm going to need a power supply. So I have this triad, which is uh, with an adapter that I could use it with the original Game Boy. Sorry, I lost chat for a minute there. <laughs> Ronnie, F-Zero theme metal cover soon? Hell yeah. Up. I want that leaning on the webcam cable. Okay, and EverDrive. If that works. Um, so interestingly enough, this cable has a switch that's Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Game Boy Color. Don't know what that switch does, but both ends of the the cable here are the same connector. So I, I would not have been able to use the official analog one with the Game Boy with uh, with this. There's nothing wrong with analog's cable. I'm just saying I'm only using the equipment I have access to right now, so that's kind of the limitation for this. But I'm gonna try and see if, what happens. 
This is not supported by analog. This is not like if this doesn't work, it just it is what it is. It's not on them or anything. But I am curious. Game Boy. Okay. <laughs> Shank, I only use link cables that have FPGAs in them because we can't have software emulated link cables. My original Game Boy seems to have frozen? What the heck? Let me try this. Let me try this again. Just. Okay. I haven't used this Game Boy in years. Definitely since before the move, so maybe the select and start buttons are broke or something. Okay, so it is working. I'm going to connect that. Okay, so this is not working, but to be honest, would this work with a real Game Boy Advance anyway? Has anybody ever tried that? Game Boy and Game Boy Color and GBA use different link cable formats, so they need different wiring. I would have thought that something like this would have taken care of it with the circuit in it or something. Just did it with an SP, huh? All right. Well, I think uh, I think we should probably put a hold on this because there's an excellent chance that this green cable, which may or may not have an FPGA in it, <laughs> is uh, is could very well be the fault. I'm bringing all this stuff to Retro World. Screw it. If anybody wants these things, you come find me. I'll sell it to you for super cheap. I think this is perfect for. Uh, maybe I'll just Shank if you're still here. Yeah, you're here. I'm just going to give you all these. If they don't work, I don't know. Throw them at somebody. <laughs> so let me, let me get this stuff out of the way, and then I'm going to try uh, some open FPGA stuff next. I, uh... I know it's probably annoying whenever I clean up on stream like this, but I can't tell you how many times I've gotten to the end of a stream and then went to grab something and there's just so much stuff. I grabbed the wrong thing, you know, I plugged the wrong thing in. There's four power cables that look almost identical. So I feel like this isn't just OCD. This is a, this is a safety precaution, making sure I don't screw anything up. Although it would be funny if I exploded it. QWERTY MOTO, the Game Boy Advance connector has the bump in the middle, the Game Boy Color doesn't. So you can plug a GBC color into a GBA, but you can't plug a GBA cable into a GBC. Interesting. Okay. Thanks, dude. Alright. I'm going to put this back in my original carrying case, where Nintendo was kind enough to allow us room to put our, uh, our games in it. Actually, this is probably... Probably fit this in there too. I'll have the best idea because I don't want it poking in it, but all right. So let me see. Oh, that's right. I can't fit my fingers in. <laughs> okay. Uh, very carefully take the micro SD out. And let me look at the folder structure and see what we have to add. So 
there's a basic folder structure it has a spot for cores so I'm going to take the cores that I downloaded before and try to add them to it so the spiritualized GBA that was released almost everything should be supported by this core okay so all you have to do apparently is dump the contents onto the root of the micro SD and merge it all together basic enough and then I need GBA BIOS bin, which I'm positive I have on my computer here somewhere. Let me open up my RetroNAS. The stream is sponsored by Big RetroNAS, a company that pays me to lie about how cheap their storage is. <laughs> RetroNAS is an open source project. <laughs> you can't buy it if you want to do. Um, Okay, so I have the GBA BIOS. I think I need to rename it GBA underscore BIOS dot bin. And then place it in the assets GBA common folder. Okay. So let me plug this in and see what we got. Now I'm sure I'm gonna have to add a folder for ROMs and then add ROMs to it, but one thing at a time. Supposed to be that indentation. I'm telling you, these little fingered people trying to punish us. Everybody with bear claws, let's push to the back of the line. Okay. Papo's big retro NAS money. <laughs> Do I have a coupon code for retro NAS? <laughs> okay. Uh, looking at the wrong window here. Open FPGA, Game Boy Advance, run, and then. Okay, so I was supposed to have put my. Uh, I was supposed to put the ROMs right in that folder. Apparently, all right. ROMs go in the same folder as the BIOS. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Did not say in the readme, but... You know, that's such a typical dev thing. All devs for everything. Like, you work with everything all day long. So you forget the most basic stuff in the instructions. That's why I very often write instructions as I'm doing whatever work that I'm doing. Just because, like, streams like this. Doing it for the first time. Uh, you know, you never know what you're going to run into. So ROMs are supposed to go in the BIOS folder. Assets, GBA. Oh, that makes sense. Common BIOS. Okay. Use promo code debt for 10% off. <laughs> uh, okay. So let me just grab some ROMs off of my RetroNAS server here. I gotta be honest, I am so glad RetroNAS is an open source project because I would have to be careful of how much I talked about it if it was a paid thing because everybody would accuse me of, of being a shill for it. Like the fact that it's uh, it's free makes it so easy to talk about because I really do love this thing. All right, Mario Kart. Let's throw some Mario Karts on here and go from there. Name one game from the links. California games it was a Batman game. Um, man, damn it! See, this is why. Later, Shank. Thanks for swinging by. Got ejected. That's when I've tried to press it in, the, the card went shooting out before. That's why it's always better to have a little indentation. But I mean, really, if we think about the complaints that I've had since we've started, I, I don't like the case unless I'm missing something. And the micro SD card slot isn't indented for people with big fingers. 
So far, there's two, two, two complaints. I think that's as fair as anybody could ask for here. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, open FPGA, Game Boy Advance, run. I did, so uh, whoever called it out, it was in the um, common folder, so it was the same as the BIOS, definitely. And USB controller, thank you, Urkel, thank you. Uh, mad, I don't think it's as bad as it was. I won't find out for another couple of days. I think, I think that it's only going to cost a couple of grand. And I say only because if it were a burst pipe, everything in this room would have been destroyed and it would have been like 20 grand to repair. So that ROM does not work. Okay. So I'm able to get, uh, get right back into it just by using the, uh, commands try this one cedar stuff i use a knife tip to get the sd card out it'll end in tears one day that right there that is because i often use my house key to open stuff up open up boxes and i was splitting a zip tie and it shot right through the zip tie and cut my hand open funny enough that scar i have there is the same exact thing i was using a knife to cut a zip tie and went through and went straight through the top of my finger my first day at work so i ended up i was 19 years old i shoved my finger in my mouth it's like gotta go to the bathroom where I, I took my finger out it like it was like in the movies it like shot blood all over the mirror so i had to sit there and wrap it up and clean it out time to switch to scissors yeah i know once again, for anybody watching, the aspect ratio is not off. I just didn't want to have to resize and recenter this every time I switched the game. I know it's being lazy, but that's not what the stream's about today. It's about just checking out the pocket. Um, everybody else has analyzed the video output and say it's awesome. Did anybody do the the, the LED tests so that they could actually see um, exactly the amount of latency? I'm going to have a video up on that soon so to teach people how to do that. You don't need a thousand frame per second camera uh but it's something that most of these reviewers should be doing and i say that with love these are mostly my friends i'm talking about awesome people way better at making videos than i am but we, we need to see more lag testing because there's still so many people out there that don't think lag makes a difference yeah i'm stinking at this game huh So let's see what other options are here. So this core, which supposedly was definitely not made by analog, won't allow you to go through the display modes like that. Um, and tools. So, does that mean that these cores that are ported to OpenFPGA won't be able to have any on-screen menus? No filters work for FPGA cores. Well, so that would absolutely make sense um, because it's not up to analog to support video filters for other people's cores. I, that's definitely the case for that. but. How would that affect people who want to make their own cores with their own menus? Um, because, you know, like on Mr., for example, the Mr. menu is available to everybody, and that's kind of part of porting the code over. And you could add stuff, whatever you'd like in there, basically. Like, um, Hotego has those very good options for, like, CRT centering, which is just brilliant, by the way. Anybody using that on a CRT-based arcade machine? But, like, so is that... Oh, go to Tools Dev Statistics... Oh, all right. I'll get back to that the next one. So, OpenFPGA has a whole bunch of stuff for on-screen menus, even ones driven by the chip 32VM, but a lot of it's coming soon. The core dev said the filters are coming soon, and they're waiting for an API update for analog. That's cool. Okay. So, let me try to find the other... Uh, so, I got... I got the Game Boy... 
Which one did I download? Alright, I already got the Game Boy Advance one, so let me get the Game Boy Color one and just drop some uh, games on that real quick. Of course, I'm still going to be watching the chat, but if I miss anything, please re-ask or anything like that. Apparently, the second FPGA is used for display filters, so they're waiting for uh, an analog for an API update. Cool. So in six months to a year. Yeah, I mean, you know. So once again, I'm just taking the contents of the zip file and merging it with um, the root of the SD card. Uh, be sure your Game Boy Color BIOS bin is in common. So same thing, assets, this would be GVC common. Uh, that's where the games will go to. Note that the link port is fully supported, but unless the GB or GVC cartridge is plugged in, it'll run at 3.3 volts. That's interesting. Uh, hmm, okay. So let me just grab the BIOS and some games. Anybody, uh, as I'm grabbing the BIOS, does anybody have a game they would like to see? Anything specific to that? BIOS files. Yeah, so the um, uh, Heber, the people who do the Mr. Multi system, are also looking into a um, uh, in, into doing a, a, a portable. I think Pork was looking into it at some point, but then dropped the project. Um, but it's not easy. I mean, making anything is hard, but trying to make something that's portable that could deal with heat issues that gets bumped around, it's, it's much different. It's much, much different than making, uh, than just making like a standard console or something like that. Okay, I got the BIOS. Minish Cap, okay, Metal Gear Solid. All right, I'll try those. Two M's, make it easy. Well, Minish Cap is obviously, um, I just realized that is, uh, all, you're talking about Game Boy Advance stuff. I'm doing Game Boy, Game Boy Color at the moment. Um, but I'm going to do Link's Awakening DX. I think that should be interesting to see. And... Anthony Den, they have, somebody has a portable PS2 using a slim motherboard. That's pretty interesting. Surprise, Shank hasn't done something like that. All right, so I got a couple of games on here. Nothing crazy. Should be at least enough to get us started. Okay. R-Type DX. I'll get that next. I already loaded this up, but I will absolutely be doing that again. So let me let me fire or let me copy that. Hey, what's up, Lon? How's it going, man? I wish I knew I'd be doing this, but I had you over to come hang out. I don't mean to dox Lon, but he lives within driving distance. So I'm pretty sure that's also not counted as doxing, but Uh, so the, to the person who wanted R-Type DX, um, I'm having trouble finding that. Okay, so it was a Japanese game. No, no, I see it here as US and Europe as well. I don't know why I couldn't find it. All right. Um, so still using the retro flag controller. Go into Open FPGA. Oh, interesting. Okay, so now you have a choice of each. 
So actually, this would be a pretty interesting one. Let's do Link's Awakening. Yeah, what are the memories for? Save states? That's an interesting one. I don't understand that either. Did that not boot? Error in framework. File ID size bad. What? I use this on everything. Open FPGA, Game Boy. Well, that's weird. Bad BIOS. Okay. Uh, well, shit. I don't... I wouldn't even know. Okay, let me power that down. Adam brings up a good point. If you were to design a portable mister, you would no longer get the FPGA chip subsidized by Terrasic. You'd have to pay the full price. And unless you're buying them in quantities of 100,000, which you can't even buy them in quantities of 100 now, um, you're paying a lot more. It was renamed properly, but I might not have the right one. So let me um, let me try to find that real quick. Or if anybody wants to has me up on Discord, you want to shoot it to me? That would be pretty cool. Okay, I just dropped R Type DX in the in the thing too. Are the cores the same as the official ones that mysteriously leaked out, or are these authored by somebody else? Lon, my guess is this: these are the analog cores, um, just as their way of le letting you play ROMs, as well as proving how open FPGA works. Uh, it also would make sense, basically, because uh, they didn't open any of the code for it. I think all of that's totally cool. So, Ah, Alex, thank you very much. Alex got me covered, sent it over. Let's try again. And I did drop R type on there. Okay. So, you know, the comments that I made, most people took it exactly how I meant it. There was some confusion, but, you know, I know QWERTY, I don't know if you're still here. I laughed at your joke. I knew you were kidding. I was, certainly didn't take it as a dig or anything like that, but QWERTY made a joke like, nobody should develop for Mr. because all you're doing is selling free units for Terrasic, which is funny. I got the joke that he was making, but if Terrasic at some, or Terrasic, however you say it, at some point was like, you know what? We're not making these anymore. Uh, screw you. The FPGA is still out there. The project could evolve. It's a little bit different. Whereas if Analog someday says, you know what? We're not supporting open FPGA anymore. So if you're a dev who bought a unit just to do this, it's up to, uh, you know, then you're, you're kind of screwed. But I don't, you know, I don't see that happening. I, I, so I just, I made that point just, just to put that out there. You know, it's basically, Analog has a million choices that would allow this to go well and only a few where they could screw it up. So I have a feeling this would be a very cool platform to program for. I also just really hope that they're able to, to get them readily available once the part shortage ends, because they definitely have a history of making just too few to be that boutique, everything's always sold out company. Lon, this is why I fucking love you so much. He has to leave the stream because he's got a buddy stopping by for, for a ham and radio a ham radio show and tell. You are such a nerd. I think you might have out nerded me. I love it so much. <laughs> so Adam has an interesting question. Ash, perfect timing, my friend. Gonna put you on the spot. Adam wanted to know if the open FPGA spec is detailed enough and open enough that someone could create a third party open FPGA device without any additional documentation or analog suing them. So that's, that's a, a double-sided question. Not, I didn't mean that in a bad way, Adam. Um, but, oh Jesus, hold on. Uh, I guess I gotta go through all this crap. All the itself. Okay. So there, I guess there's two parts of that. If you write code for open FPGA, can you easily take that code and port it to other platforms? But yes, can somebody make 
hardware based off of the same FPGAs that have the same ins and outs that allows you to to use the same exact cores? That's both really good. That's a good question. Yeah, Reluctant Hero, I have to very politely and respectfully remind you that the vocal group of Mr. Users who are against the core porting makes up a very, very small percentage of Mr. Users. Um, most Mr. Users don't get involved in the drama and, and respectfully don't care. They People who have the ability to pay for people's Patreons to support, and people who don't are still fans, and people who have opinions are always welcome to them, but it's very, very small percentage of people that... Uh, that get like that. Yeah, so that, that, is, that is an interesting point. Thank you, QWERTY. To create a third-party open FPGA compatible device would require you to recreate the whole closed second FPGA stuff, the video scaler, etc. So that, that is an interesting one. Whereas when you're programming for Mr., um, anything that uses that FPGA chip, you would still have to port your code, uh, unless you were, for some stupid reason, want to redo exactly the DE10, but you could still make it around the basic software. So it's, you know, neither is easy. Neither is, um, neither is something that I would see many people doing, but... All right, so same game, but with the Game Boy Core. Let's, let's see if it changes the colors or anything. No, it looks like it's just running Game Boy Color mode. Yeah, all right, so that looks about the same. Is there, um... I wonder why there's Game Boy and Game Boy Color separate. Maybe just for future stuff. All right, R-Type DX. Can you still change the color palette on boot like you could with the GBC? Interesting question. Uh, I forgot how to do that, it's been so long. Shifty Jedi said, ultimately, I think of Mr. Peaks when we could find a way to shift the nano and memory module from a console setup to a handheld setup to our arcade setup. Um, yeah, you know, I always kind of thought, um, I always kind of thought it would be great for have, to have somebody create an open platform exactly for something like this. The problem is then you would have the same infighting that you have right now between, you know, the analog trolls and the Mr. Trolls. And, you know, you can't people would just profit on that you can't do that and it's like I actually talked to a few people about opening up a not-for-profit company that did exactly that and the reason that we didn't was because to build prototypes for this stuff I mean it would have been half a million bucks to get this thing off the ground and if we were doing it not for profit if we were doing it just to provide a hardware platform for mr. devs uh, then somebody would have to basically donate half a million dollars which nobody's gonna do that so that is what I think would benefit people the most. To have one set of hardware built off of the latest FPGA chip that we could buy in, in bulk so that we would get a, a Terrasic type discount. Um, but it's just it's not going to happen. You'd have to have uh, you'd have to have a lot of money dumped into it. Hold the D-pad direction and optionally A or B when booting up a Game Boy game. Okay. Uh, so let me... Quit. Confirm. Uh, Game Boy Color. It's Metal Gear Solid was uh, Game Boy Color, right? So I would have to have... Uh, yeah, alright, hold on. D-pad direction and A or B when booting up the game. Yeah, so I would have to put an actual Game Boy game in. So let me let me load that on real quick. Ragnarok, my intersection with the retro community is so confusing because I don't follow it super closely, but see Twitter posts from people, so they get a crazy, incomplete view of the drama. Yeah, I imagine that's exactly how it would go. Um, okay. Need Game Boy Classic game, yeah. 
Uh, 300 Canadian, Adam. It's like 190 US for a while. So let me... Yeah, Marcus, there was also a, a Metroid 2 Return of Samus one. Although, I got to admit, after, uh, after playing... Um, what was it? Another Metroid 2 remake? I don't think I'll ever play the original again. AM2R was just so freaking good, and the music was amazing. All right, ROMs, Game Boy. Regular Game Boy, not color, okay. Yes, JP, thank you for reminding me. Alex, yeah, there are a lot of Metroid 2 colorization hacks. It's kind of interesting. Some look a lot better. Um, let's see, what do we got? So, Super Mario Land 2. It's always a good one because it's a really nice looking game. Um, it didn't... Maybe I should... It didn't make a Game Boy folder, so I'm going to make one and see what happens. I don't think that's going to matter. Uh, and with that, Super RC Pro Am, why not? All right, that's good enough. we got two games to start. Oh, Adam was talking 300 just for the chip. Interesting. Once I, uh, I kind of figure out the flow of this, I'll probably just put the whole ROM library on here. All right. Tool dev stats option. Let me get that up. Let's see how that works with Open FPGA. Game Boy. I must have put them in. Did I, did I put them in the wrong thing? I, I must have. Oh, that's interesting. Not QWERTY. Every time you eject your memory card, I hear the Windows eject tone and think one of my USB devices is rambling, disconnected itself. Sorry. Sorry, QWERTY. <laughs> I'll, I'll just turn my volume down. My bad. Uh, Tom Van Veen, what's up? Okay, so let's... Um... So that looks pretty cool. So let me take a screenshot of this so I can flip back and forth. I forgot how to do that in uh, screenshot. See it through here. So that way I could look at this before and after for booting with a different color palette. Oh, of course, I took the screenshot right after the thing changed. Okay. Screenshot. Okay, now let me try booting it with the other color palette like people had said. And let me turn off the with the dev stuff because that is pretty cool, but I don't want that to get in the way. So, okay, quit. Yep. Oh, I did the wrong thing, didn't I? Oops. Open FPGA, Game Boy, Super Mario Land Two, and I'm holding B and down on boot to change the palette. No, so it it doesn't seem to be working like the original for that. I could certainly try again, though. B is set to A, right? You know, good point. Trying again. 
you can't change with custom palettes yet but uh, I am interested to see what you were talking about because you can on an original Game Boy Color. Um, so try that way, Game Boy Color. Back out because I put it in the wrong spot. And I'm going to hit down. Oh, that just worked, didn't it? Yeah. That's definitely a different color. And it definitely, you all saw it changing, right? I'm going to do that again. Well, whoever did this pour that definitely wasn't Kevin did a great job. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That works nice. Anybody feeling blue? That's cool. So... Uh, what else, what else do we want to see? Um, I think I've shown just about everything that I would need to know about this, but I'm kind of interested to see if anybody else has any other requests. By the way, I don't know if any of you all follow Art on Twitter, but he's been, uh, he's been fighting the good, uh, the good ROM fight or a good lag fight for a while and he's been having just as much slack thrown his way as I have and he's not backing down and he's right SMS games on GG EverDrive yeah uh, don't have a Game Gear EverDrive anymore though sorry uh, is Game Boy the only core for now uh, the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance uh, place a DMG BIOS in instead of a GBC okay uh, does anybody have one they could send me? Because, uh, wait, I think I might... I tried the GBC BIOS before. Let me see if I get the Game Boy one. I'll do that right now. Uh, Justin wants to know if the open FPGA Game Boy colors... Game Boy cores have the high-def LCD shaders on the device's display, uh, not HDMI. I don't think so. I could try again for you. Um, Game Boy BIOS won't work. Okay, um, tried that, said the wrong size. All right, well, since I got it here, now I could, uh, at the very least, put the games back where they were supposed to be. That was my fault. Yeah, I'm seeing right here in the file menu. Um, let's see how fast it would be to just copy a bunch of these over real quick. Yeah, Super Mario Land 2 was so impressive. Because if you look at the original Super Mario Land and 2, like, they they just learned so much between those. It's pretty amazing to see uh, how different the graphics are, everything else. Um, have I gotten the low volume bug on GBA games like Double Dragon Advance? I can't. I haven't heard a single bit of audio from this. Whatever you hear is what I hear, and that's it. Um, it says, let's see how long, it says 2 minutes and 15 seconds to copy the whole Game Boy Color uh, ROM set over, so I'm just going to do that. I can answer any questions while we wait. Um, and the original Game Boy one is probably going to be just as, uh, as quick, so I should do that too, just so it's here and we have it for anything else. It's like a leap from Super Mario 1 to Super Mario World. I agree, yeah, 100%. So this is why I always spend a little bit more money on the slightly faster micro SDs. I don't go crazy, but like if there is a $20 version that runs at one speed and a $26 version that runs a little faster, I'll always get the faster one because of exactly this. I don't want to just sit here and wait while I'm working on stuff. It's worth the extra six bucks to do that for me. So... No EverDrive, but do I have an SMS adapter for the Game Gear? No, I sold all of that. Um, so I bought a house last year, moved to the Burbs, and I am broke. So I'm selling basically everything again um, because I'm not broke yet. And, uh, you know, not to get too personal or anything, but I lost my job four or five years ago. 
right after it was legit a week and a half after they told me your job is definitely safe for the next year. It, you know, you might have some issues next summer. We might have to re, you know, reorganize, but definitely safe now. And then a week and a half. So I like I invested in retro RGB, like bought a, an OLED TV I always wanted. I was like, all right, let me start saving. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, we're just kidding. Everybody get fired right now today. It's actually the day that I tried to start the Indiegogo an hour after I launched it. One hour. So I sold basically almost everything, um, but I sold it at a time where I was desperate. So a lot of people took advantage. A lot of people didn't. A lot of really amazing people stepped up to help. So I just, I see myself going down that path now where I'm like, now not only did I have to maintain a house, I have to fix a hole in my ceiling. Now I have to replace the stuff that broke. Now I got, so I'm like, while while I still have the ability to say, no, that's too low of a price, I'm starting to get rid of a lot of stuff because I do not want to wait until I'm desperate and have to take the half low ball offer. Now I can definitely say, no, absolutely not. I'll sell it to somebody else. If, you know, just might take another month. So maybe that's a douchey thing to say. I don't know. I'm all right with it. Okay. Copied one of them over. R <laughs> RC towards the new SMS adapter. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, I also just, I also don't want to live in clutter anymore. Um, I have this beautiful family room slash office and, um, you know, I, I lived in a place where it was floor to ceiling stuff forever. So it, it was fine. My wife was cool with it. she supported the shit out of all of it, but I just, I don't want to do that anymore. So if I'm not, if I don't need it for testing or just want it for me, then I'm, I'm probably not going to keep it around. Like, I doubt I'm going to keep it in N64 much longer, which I know it's going to piss a lot of people off. <laughs> but it's the truth. Sal uh, Malazzo, would I be interested in selling me your cartridge reader for ripping N64 games? So here, um, here's exactly what I mean. Um, hold on. It's getting it, getting it, getting it. This is a Sandy cart reader that allows you to do exactly that. You could rip a whole bunch of different carts. Uh, Tito did a video on it. Please check out Macho Nacho Productions for more info. Uh, I probably, I might not ever use this anymore for me, but I guarantee you at least once or twice a year, I'm going to need to use this to do some kind of work with somebody on something. So this is small. It doesn't take up much space. And I consider this a tool that I require for my job. Like a mechanic doesn't love every tool in this giant toolbox, but they, you know, they need them. And I, that's one of these, by the way, that wasn't a dig. I think this is an awesome piece of equipment. So uh, I do appreciate the offer, but no, I'm going to need to hold on to that as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, thanks, Pat. Hey, what's up, Ed? Yeah, Ed's got some cool stuff. So, so thank you very much. Um, yeah, you know, I am lucky enough to have a bunch of really, really, really good friends and good people around me. And so I could always help or get help with that stuff. It was a lot easier when I lived right next to Destiny. So I could just be like, sorry to do this, dude, but I need to borrow your M cable again or something like that. Mad, I'm, uh, I'm being careful about that because I got friends that are still associated with them. And while I do feel like I got done dirty, it was also... 100% my fault because uh, when I asked for a contract, they were like, yeah, we'll get it next week. And I should have said, cool, I'm not doing anything till I get it. And I started anyway in a leap of faith. Uh, and then when I asked for the contract again, I was told, well, do you really need one? It's like, as long as you pay me what you promised, no. And they didn't. So that's the short version. But I, I just... I feel like if I tell the whole story, most people are going to be like, wow, that, that is shitty. A lot of people are going to be like, well, it's your own fault, which it is. But there's also a lot of people still associated with them that I just don't want. I don't want their contracts to not get renewed because I told the truth about what happened to me and their friends with me. Pat, if we lived near each other, we would be having record player powwow days like at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> we would just be rotating back and forth on whoever's houses we're going to this week would be your week because I have a hole in my ceiling <laughs> yeah scepter my word's always good enough and even people that don't like me would vouch for me on that one so that's uh 
That's how you know. That's how you know it's true. If somebody's like, I don't fucking like Bob. He talks too much. He's obnoxious. He's loud. It takes him forever to get to the point. Do you trust him? Well, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of a thing that's important to me. Okay, we are copied. We have, we have everything copied over. I apologize for the wait. I just feel like that five minutes is less time than if I kept going back and forth. Um, so now we have everything loaded. Okay. All right. Once again, I have to carefully use my uh, my knife to get the SD card in. Bunch of tiny-handed people. Kevin doesn't have tiny hands either. I've hung out with Kevin quite a bit, so I don't, I don't know what that was all about. All right. So let me go to Game Boy Advance, run Super Circuit, and let me just check exactly on the main screen what people are asking for. I think the answer is no, but... No. So you don't uh, you don't get anything on Open FPGA yet with uh, as far as like the screen the screen stuff goes. Okay. So just to to recap here, we did some unboxing before with a lot of stuff that I I can't use because I'm I'm not good enough to um, you know remute would use these MIDI things Miss Mad Lemon would use these I I don't know how I work at most of that stuff I'm I'm a meathead caveman guitar player I can't MIDI stuff frightens me uh, but we also had a couple other accessories that were pretty cool um, who's been here since his charge was at 53 that's awesome uh, okay. Let's see, so now I have my folders, beautiful. Uh, Super Game Boy Enhanced, let's see how those look. Uh, I know we already saw Link's Awakening, but that had uh, a really, like you know damn well um, what you were looking at, like the Super Game Boy thing went around. I don't think there's any Super Game Boy modes on this though. <laughs> Meet Ed Caveman exclusive to stream in September. <laughs> okay. Obviously, I must not have picked the English one, but. So, while we're here with the Open FPGA, any other games anybody want to see, or anything even on the original, because I, I still do have the EverDrives. Um, if not, I'm going to call this in a couple of minutes, but I think we have everything loaded up, so now we can at least try whatever anybody wants. Right here. UGO Duelist Soul. Is that a uh, Game Boy or Game Boy Color game? GBA, okay. So it looks like a lot of people want Game Boy Advance. So let me grab what do I do with the EverDrive. Let's see those dual skill bobs. <laughs> Through, through an OBS window? Zero skills. Zero. R-Type DX. I thought I showed that, but let me show it again real quick through the open core here. Um, R-Type. There we go. Does the Game Boy uh, X7 work now? It uh, it did when we tried it on the stream. Try a pocket hack so people can see it. I'm not sure what you mean. Stunt Racer FX Stunt Racer FX demo scene ROM. I don't think I've seen that. Truffle Shuffle. I'd do it. I have zero shame about my body. I am fat because I like food. It gives me a whole lot of energy. I can still... Actually, I was about to say I can still lift heavy shit, but once I heard the water start to pour down, I got that, like, 
crazy mom strength and I started picking up all my monitors and running across the room with them and I picked up a shelf with like 150 200 pounds worth of stuff on it and carried that across the room and I was like I probably shouldn't have done that and I woke up the next morning very sore so no I, I should not have done that so maybe I'm not as strong as I used to be just getting old uh, that's where you can play games in uh, Game Boy Studio yeah I don't um I might be missing something, and please correct me if I am, but now with these cores available here, what's the point of doing that? Because up until now, when you were when you would convert games for use in Game Boy Studio, that was essentially like a very long and drawn out way of, of open or um like adding a jailbreak firmware for it. Uh so Hey, what's up, Smoke? We're using your packs here, my friend. So is there a reason to use those now? And uh, once again, I'm asking honestly. I'm not being sarcastic. Am I missing something? Or Very cool to see smoke in here. I miss you, dude. At the moment, it's going to give you filters. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Real-time clock. Okay, okay. Okay. Darth, Darth Mike, sort of. There was a couple people that tried to claim this was the jailbreak. It's not the jailbreak. It's just, it's the core. So. Um, let me move this over. Damn it, OBS. So, I, once again, I'm. this is not the Analog Pocket's fault. This is my fault. That, uh, here we go. I'm just trying to make everything fit in the window easier. Oh, Pat, there's a bunch of UGOs. <laughs> Which one am I supposed to play? <laughs> yeah, so uh, MP Pro uh, Shooter, Scooter, sorry, my friend. Uh, Open FPGA, according to everybody in, uh, who's been reading the analog releases, said that they are getting access to filters through the course. Um, so. Uh, that should be something that people would be able to get in the future. So you're right. For right now, the GB Studio ones would give access, but in the future, people would be able to gain that through these. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Yu-Gi-Oh! and Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and obviously even sounds different when my Japanese friends pronounce it so I, I just assume I get everything wrong I think Pat's messing with me I've never played this game before yeah GIF versus GIF yeah exactly Can I port the other analog cores for use on the pocket? I mean, I can't. They're all locked. Kevin would be the only person that would be able to do that. Aw, oh, thanks, Pat. Uh, what is this game that I'm playing? I've never played this before. Uh, Shot Goblin? No. Um, no. No clue. This is a card game. All right, I'm out. <laughs> uh, what the heck? Let's see what we got here. Tried Tetris Worlds, why not? Did I ever review the Sin and Light Gun? Uh, I have it sitting right over there, right behind the camera, and I have not. Let's see how far I get with Tetris uh, through an OBS window. Two minute level challenges. All right. 
You know, the 8-bit do, 8-bit do, that's kind of a funny one because if you turn on one of their speakers, it says 8-bit do. That's what they programmed from the factory. But when somebody asked them a while back, they said it, it's the other way to pronounce it. So, I, I don't know. I also, like, I try really hard, but at the same time, especially when it comes to a company, don't care. Because it's all about intent, right? If I was intentionally pronouncing somebody or something's name wrong, I'm a dick. If I'm genuinely trying to do the right thing, then, you know, what's the big deal? So far, so good. Through the OBS window. Let's see if I can pull this off. Iridian 3D. You mentioned that before. I'm going to play that next, definitely. Yeah, Nintendo, like, Doe, yeah, 8-bit Doe, Nintendo, that would have made sense. Maybe it was, and then Nintendo threatened to sue him like they did everybody else. <laughs> yeah, and wasn't it Neil's video who said um, it worked great, but he felt a tiny bit of latency from when he moved uh, the the light gun around to when there was actually movement on the screen. I could be getting that wrong, so please don't don't quote me on that one. Ah, damn it. I can't even blame lag for that one. Oh, I pressed the wrong button there. Well, I screwed this one up. All right, I'll go to the... Uh, I will go to the other game that somebody had suggested. What was that? Uh, Iridian 3D. Okay. Wait, no, no, no. Play cartridge. Right, here we go. Yeah, James, but all of those cores are, are locked. Those are analog cores. So you wouldn't be able to um, you wouldn't be able to, to port those unless you had the original source code. So that's why it's always going to be up to analog. But there is nothing stopping people from porting like a, a Genesis or Super Nintendo code from Mister over to this. It's just it's just the discussion that we've been having online that most people most of the loudest voices just were trolling about. A lot of good people commenting on it. Analog Duo does look awesome. I mean, you know, it's, at this point, it's going to be released alongside the HD Retrovision cables, but still, it does look very cool. And I like how it's the only one of their consoles, other than the Pocket, of course, that actually looks like the original. Because the Pocket does look close to the original Game Boy's feel, but, um... Yeah, it's up, Shank. Just about to close it out. But yeah, I like how that actually feels like a dual. Or like a duo, actually. The controls in this are bugging me out because I feel like it should be the opposite, but this is interesting. I, I like I'd love to see MVG do a video explaining how this game gets its graphics to work like this. Shank, good question. Perfect timing too, because I think I'm gonna close this out soon. The results of today's testing are that the analog pocket, in my personal opinion, not fact, totally lives up to the hype. The screen is gorgeous, the features are cool. Uh I do not like the fact that the dock is, was only compatible with one of the four controllers that I had uh, plugged into it. I thought that was very weird. Um, I constantly made fun of the there's no indentations because uh, for the micro SD card, so I needed a tool to get the card out each time, which, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I didn't love the case, but everything, all the other accessories I liked, I thought were very cool. Um, Open FPGA looks very promising. Analog has a million chances to get it right and only a few things they could do wrong that would piss everybody off So it's really up to Chris Tabor on how he wants to proceed with this um, But it's looking very promising and overall. I just think this thing's really cool Whoa 
What about lag? So, um, I I don't want to give any numbers because I haven't tested it myself, and I, I might try to find time to do that. Um, maybe I'll do a follow-up stream tomorrow real quick. But, uh, I mean, I've been following Analog's products since, I mean, since before Kev joined, and I've been following Kevtris's work since day one. And I know there's a team of people working on it now. It's not just Kevin, but at the same time, they're not going to release something that's got a ton of lag. And their other consoles prove that because you could use light guns on a CRT monitor. If it had just two milliseconds of lag, you couldn't do that. Heck, I think just one millisecond of lag, you couldn't do that. So I, I can't for the life of me imagine that this is going to be a laggy console. I would, I think it would be kind of cool to just try to lag test the screen itself. But to do that in a kind of a scientific method, I would have to take apart the pocket, which is not mine. This is a friend of mine who so was nice enough to let me do this with it. But I think, um, I think I would have to take it apart, solder an LED to it, and then use high-speed camera to test it. And then I would also like to do lag testing on the original screen. Oh, Shank. Shank, yeah, I'm not even going to go into that. You just wait. You just wait to see what analog products were like pre-Kevin. Oh, boy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's I, I have a feeling that this thing is going to be pretty much zero lag. Um, I would love to see somebody like Tito do a shootout with this and with the original Game Boy and everything else. Sir Sethery did exactly that. In fact, I got to drop that in the chat just because I thought that was really cool. Colin, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you all for the super chats. It's really awesome. I appreciate the support so much. Um, all right. Sethery. Me... Yes. Okay. Let me drop this in the chat real quick. Uh, I, I actually spoke to Seth as well, so... Hopefully we could all work together, but I would love to mess with it. Shank, uh, when you when you come, I'm gonna give you a stack of LED stuff so that you could have it for lag testing as well. I'm gonna give I'm gonna be giving those out to everybody I know pretty much. Um, so I would love to see it. I would really really love to see people go the distance to do all the lag testing. I just uh, genuinely think that it's gonna be zero or near zero. And as far as the lag on the screen itself. I think it's going to be the same as the original or or maybe less depending i think that could be pretty interesting uh somebody just sent me a demo that i think maybe i should close on so uh let me just power this off real quick and that way i can kind of try it um any other questions before i go shot goblin what was space war on um and you know what i'm gonna try it on the everdrive just so I could show everybody that it does work on the EverDrive. I would just like to point out that I did not need to use a tool to get the micro SD card out of the EverDrive. Um, oh, the third open FPGA core. Uh, yeah, it's... It, I guess I could try to find a link to it if you wanted. It's just that old game from uh, from the 60s or something, right? Thank you, John D. Much appreciated. All right, so we're trying the Game Boy Pocket again, or the EverDrive on the Game Boy Pocket, just to see, just in case anybody's joining and was curious. This is the X7 on the latest firmware. Shock Goblin, YouTube has been a little bit... Um, uh, a little bit militant on their blocking of links. So it's not me if, uh, deleting you. Um, let me just Google that real quick. Resources. Uh, yeah. I'll give that a try, but let me get to this demo first. So, play cartridge. Ooh, didn't error out before. Let's try this again. We see everything. Okay, booting. Uh, 
Yeah, sorry, if anybody has posted a link, um, it is not me, I promise. Okay, that's working. I don't know what happened. By the way, this is the other reason I love that Sandy Cart Reader, because I ripped all I ripped the Remute album so I could keep it on my EverDrive and listen to it. <laughs> I, I still bought all of the Remute albums, but I just find it easier to keep in one spot. Wow, that's a pretty impressive demo. That is really cool. Oh wait, this is a playable demo too? That's kind of nuts. Wow. What developers have figured out to do on old hardware is just mind-blowing. Does a lightning cable to HDMI cable work instead of the dock? That is a great question. I'm gonna guess no, but I'm gonna end with that. Because I just bought that dock for the Switch, so might as well put my, put my money to work. All 20 bucks. Oh, Shank already tried? Well, you know what? I don't mind failing on camera. Let me plug it in one last time. Just... This is the dock that I had used with, um, where am I? Here we go. With the switch that worked. I'll, uh, I'll drop a link in the chat. It doesn't have an HDMI transmitter on it. The dock handles that part. Okay, so th then there's no chance in hell this is going to work. I'll plug it in anyway just, just to show people a black screen, but... Other than that, I think it's it. I think this was a great stream. I, I really like the pocket. Um, I, I think there's just potential for this to go in a million different good directions. Okay, so power. Yeah, doesn't do a, doesn't do anything. Makes sense though. Um, anyone share the name of this demo? This is the stunt race. Stunt Racer FX Demo. And let me get a link to that. Uh, come on, I know I had it here. I will check the chat in one second. I'm just trying to find a link for those people who had asked. Okay, I think I found it. Yes, okay. Oh, Shifty Jedi, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, eBay, or uh, eBay, wow. Whew. Uh, not able to click on that, so there we go. That might be a better one. All right, so can it run the Pocket Game Boy demo without glitches? Uh, I mean, it has been. Well, I think that's about it. You are all awesome. Thank you all so much for joining me. Um, big shout out to, uh, to to Analog for definitely getting this right. I really like this thing a lot. And I hope, I honestly and genuinely hope their open FPGA idea 
falls into place and works out really well. I think it would be very cool for everybody if they had a portable console like that um, to run FPGA stuff. And really, I mean this with love and respect. The only people who could screw this up are analog. Uh, so hopefully they, they continue to keep their word and we have a really awesome uh, awesome platform. But if not, Mr.'s still freaking awesome too. That's um, So we'll see. But I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to playing this a little bit more tonight. See if I actually could enjoy a handheld for once. But thank you all very much. Thank you for the super chats. And uh, thank you just for hanging out. You, you all make this freaking incredible. So thank you all. Thank everybody except Shank. Talk to you soon.